In this short video, I will give you a brief overview of what dissociation is, how ketamine produces it, and whether it's required for ketamine's rapid antidepressant action. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel Kohtala, I'm a pharmacist and a neuroscientist by training. Having spent the last five years or so studying the mechanisms of various anesthetic drugs, including ketamine, I decided to start a channel in order to share my knowledge of neuropharmacology. This video is about ketamine and how ketamine can produce a brain state known as dissociation. What makes ketamine unique from most other sedatives and anesthetics is the state of dissociative anesthesia produced by the blockade of N-methyl D-aspartate receptors. Ketamine does not primarily act through gamma-aminobutyric acid or GABA receptors like most other anesthetics that possess sedative or hypnotic properties. Instead, Ketamine acts by entering and blocking NMDA receptor ion channels. By entering these ion channels, ketamine effectively blocks the ability of these channels to pass ions and thus modulate the activity of neuronal cells or neurons. Because these channels are very crucial for synaptic communication and also for processes like uh, learning and memory, the blockade of these channels by ketamine produces a very peculiar set of psychotropic effects. The term used to describe these effects is dissociation and ketamine is known as in dissociative anesthetic. Dissociation can occur as a result of trauma or an epileptic seizure, but here we will focus on dissociative drugs. Dissociation has been defined as a discontinuity in the normal integration of consciousness, memory, identity, emotion, perception, body representation, motor control and behavior. The dissociative effects of ketamine can be described as a sensation of being drawn away from one's sensory perception and one may be able to, for example, experience an exciting situation without being drawn into it emotionally. Similarly, ketamine reduces sensory sensations from the body and also acts as a painkiller. Higher doses of ketamine produce a dose-dependent deepening of the dissociative state. Ultimately, dreamlike states, often accompanied by vivid open and closed eye visuals and strong perturbations of thought and bodily sensations, also emerge. These experiences may also manifest as sensations of weightlessness, of floating or being detached from one's body. Now, the explanation for the conscious experience of dissociation remains unclear. Some of these effects can be perhaps explained by the unique shifting of intracortical dynamics that takes place under the effects of ketamine. But unfortunately, we still don't truly understand how neural activity translates to a conscious experience. Notably, one recent study from the laboratory of Carl Dyseroth found that dissociative drugs induce a slow electrophysiological rhythm from around 1 to 3 Hz in the layer 5 neurons of the retrosplenial cortex in rodents. Moreover, they were able to demonstrate the occurrence of a similar rhythm in a patient suffering from a focal epilepsy using intracranial electrode recordings. The activity of this region was temporally correlated with the pre-seizure reports of dissociation and a local electrical stimulation of this area was enough to induce a dissociative experience, suggesting that this area in the posterior medial cortex is involved in the generation of the dissociative state in humans. Now, another key question to ask is whether this dissociation is required for ketamine's rapid antidepressant effects. Unfortunately, this question hasn't really been studied that much, 
and it is quite difficult to draw any conclusions from the current literature. There have also been studies looking at other components of the psychoactive uh, experience induced by ketamine and trying to see whether those uh, could, for example, predict an antidepressant response. In one interesting approach, Stoker and colleagues screened 62 YouTube videos of depressed patients narrating their subjective experience of receiving ketamine and they found that 27.4% of the individuals reported an experience of floating that they strongly associated with the amelioration of their depressive symptoms. The connection between the treatment response and the sensation of floating was subsequently investigated by pooling data from several clinical trials which concluded that unfortunately the two were not associated. But still, more approaches like this, trying to look at the subjective experiences under ketamine, could be important in understanding its uh, psychological and uh, psychiatric uh, effects. Now, the purpose of this video was just to give a, a brief overview of what dissociation is. If you'd like to learn more about ketamine and other uh, neuropsychopharmacological drugs, please subscribe to my channel and press like to support my efforts. I will be producing more videos related to other neuropharmacology content as well. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.